the respect model. I call the respect model actionable philosophy which guides and directs behavior. Now, it's not kind of nearly as convoluted as it sounds. Example, my best friend uh, in town is Wendy. She's, she's, a, she's an environmentalist. She also has a business, but she's an environmentalist, right? So when we first became friends, she actually literally has no garbage can. She actually came into my office, right? Now, I'm a pretty, you know, conscientious kind of guy, right? I live on a farm. I like to she went through my trash can. She goes, Paul, you can recycle this, and you can recycle this, and you can recycle that. And you can't recycle this because this is a number nine, and our community doesn't recycle it. But if you give it to me, I sometimes go to this other place. Like, okay. She drives a hybrid vehicle. She buys her groceries locally. She goes to elementary schools, and she teaches them about recycling. There's a philosophy. You might have a philosophy around being an environmentalist, but if you don't act in ways that really fulfill on that, it doesn't really work, right? I mean, look, all world religions have an, what's an actionable philosophy that hopefully you're living beyond like a Sunday morning around, right? Look, it's a way to live your life. I'm not trying to put the respect model on you know, the same level as a world religion, though that might be nice. Um, but the idea is this. It's, it's not something you temporarily engage in. It's a way that you live your life. And if it's the way you live your life, right, it leads to all kinds of ways in which you act with one another, with leaders, with your customers, and with the world at large. I love this. My, my sister-in-law was eight and a half months pregnant. She goes on the subway in New York. Nobody stands up for her. I mean, this issue of disrespect is just so prevalent in our society. And I get that every generation thinks the next generation is less respectful, but I... You know, we've got issues. We've got real problems here. So a quick story about um, Jimmy. Um, Jimmy was um, in this organization technically amazing, right? And, but he was a really, like the proverbial apple, the bad apple, tox toxic to the environment. And when I started working with this organization, I was like, why is, not, why is he not being fired? And the answer was because he's so good technically, we can't live without him. Look, I think you can live with... You can train anybody, right? I, you can live without him because of the damage he was doing. So one day I get the phone call. The plant manager says to me, Paul, you have three weeks to make Jimmy mature. And if you don't, he's getting fired. Now, believe it or not, Jimmy was like 30. Believe it or not, that's not as difficult as it sounds. It's just not. Um, and within a couple uh, months or two, he actually literally became one of the most well-liked members of the team. OK, that's not why I'm telling you the story. I'm telling you the story because of this. Early on, the first couple of days we're working together, obviously I'm talking about respect. We go out to get a cup of coffee, and he's rude to the woman who's serving us coffee. So I look at him, and I go, what the hell was that? Right? And this light bulb goes off for him, and he says, oh, you mean I'm supposed to treat everybody with respect? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the idea here. Right? It's not just something you do because it serves you. It's actually the way you live your life. See, you can't do it sometimes and other times. It just doesn't work that way. Maybe you've been with a leader, right, who says one thing publicly and does another thing privately, right? It just it doesn't work. So I want you to consider the following, and I do have this as a graphic in your handouts.